worshiping with the messianic is because that's the cherokee and the cherokee tribe are, are tied very closely um to hebrews when you do a study you find out that they um were doing things right out of the bible and it was it's very interesting you can look up the cherokee indians in their um hebrew connection and so the guy who um joshua he lives in Tennessee and he went with the Cherokees and he made, he did that song with them. So I thought it was a cool song. We heard it when we were at a conference and the young people were singing it. And I just think the whole thing about the tribes, you know, we're a part of a tribe. You know, the Bible says we're, a, we're, we're peculiar people, right? We're a royal priesthood, but we're a part of a tribe. I don't think we, we realize that we're of the tribe of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Amen. So it's something to rejoice about, right, babe? Yeah, I want to get I want to get the shofars out, please. And we're going to blow the shofar. Um, because one of the things we have to remember that tonight is a double Shabbat. Um, because it's the regular Shabbat that we're starting tonight on Friday night, which we would do every week uh, that we celebrate the seventh day Shabbat. And we, we know that the Hebrew calendar starts um, it, at sundown um, of the previous night. So even though tomorrow we, we would say a Shabbat, really Friday evening is the evening of Shabbat. And so, um, so we're going to celebrate it, but also because it's also the first night of tabernacles, the first night and the eighth day are what's called high Shabbats or high Sabbath. So they're not a regular Sabbath in the course of the, they can fall on any day of the week and not just the seventh day, but they are a special Sabbath that are part of the, the Moedim. So um, let's right now get our shofars. I hope everybody gets those shofars out and, you know, are you ready? One, and we're gonna shout the victory because this is the season of rejoicing. One, two, three. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Um, Mike, if it's possible, I, you're hosting the meeting. If you could allow me to record the meeting for the teaching, I'd appreciate it. Um, sent you a message, but I don't know if you got it. I appreciate it. It's not letting me record unless you give me that permission. All right, perfect, perfect. And we're recording. Okay. All right, all right, all right, good. Okay, so we're gonna start the recording of the Sukkot Feast of Tabernacles meeting. And we're so happy that you joined us tonight. We are been celebrating um, basically all day. <laughs> and um, we, we um, going to give you some practical things um, tonight so you could learn how, because even if you're on this call, just so you understand that the Hebrew mindset is not just to learn about something, um, but it's actually to do it. Right. And so just you being on the call tonight is in a sense, you're doing it because you're actually keeping the feast um, in, in, in a way. And we're going to learn how to keep it um, more and more. And as we grow in it, as we grow in the Lord, and as he teaches us how to do it and through the scriptures and practical, um, because right now, I want to just tie in so you understand, we had the Day of Atonement on Sunday evening. We fasted to Monday evening. 
and we did that and 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 that's five days ago and so there's a five day connection if you will between um, the 10th of the month, the 10th of the seventh month, which we celebrated Day of Atonement, and now it's the 15th of the seventh month on the Hebrew calendar, but they tie together. How do they tie together? Well, we know the number five in, in, in the Bible is very significant. It, it's actually the Hebrew letter He, um, which is the breath of God. Um, it also could mean the grace of God. So what would happen on the Day of Atonement that the priest you know, there would be two goats and the, there would be the scapegoat or the scapegoat that the priest would lay his hands on and he would put all his weight of all the sins of Israel on the head of that scapegoat. And during the time before Yeshua um, uh, went to the cross and rose from the dead, before that time, there was a uh, something that they did is that they would tie to identify what was the scapegoat and what was the, the sin offering. They would tie a white cord to the scapegoat and then they would have a man lead that scapegoat out into the wilderness and at a certain point before, right this is before the resurrection um, Josephus talks about that the white cord would turn excuse me the red cord would turn white and when the red cord around that scapegoat turned white all Israel broke out into just a loud rejoicing and celebration because that's how they knew by a physical sign that their sin had been covered, that their sin had been uh, removed and their guilt and their shame, it went into that wilderness. And so that kind of tell that um, day of when that, that um, red cord turned white, that at that point that from that point it ended the day of atonement and they would begin to build the booths for Sukkot or for what we would call tabernacles in English so they kind of tie in so just to understand we are in right now a and one of the names for tabernacles is the season of our rejoicing so it's a personal, it's our rejoicing, it's your rejoicing, it's a time to rejoice, you know, rejoice in the Lord always. Yeah. And when you see, you know, there's a scripture in the New Testament that says rejoice in the Lord always. It really helps us uh, locate that scripture. It would be pointing to this day of Sukkot where we celebrate, where we rejoice yeah. in the Lord. But tonight I want to really try to help you um, learn deep um, meaning and understanding of this feast so you really understand what it's all about. And I wanted to go to the first mention of the word boos or sukkah or sukkot. And I want you to see its um, context. And I wanted you to see what it could be pointing to. And so you could kind of learn about why we celebrate Sukkot, why would we want to even as Christians celebrate Sukkot, and you're going to see just from the first mention of why you would want to celebrate um, Sukkot or Feast of Tabernacles. So thank you for joining us, Pastor Lisa is going to read. The first mention is Genesis 33, verse 17. And Jacob journeyed to Sukkot, or booths, and built him a house and made a Sukkot, booths, for his cattle. Therefore, the name of the place is called Sukkot. Our boots. Okay, so the first mention, Genesis 33, Jacob, whose later his name is changed to Israel, he goes to a place called Booths or Sukkot, because Sukkot is the plural for Sukkah. He builds a Sukkah in Hebrew, mm -hmm. and a Sukkah in Hebrew is a hut. It's a lair, it's a pavilion, it's a tabernacle, it's a temporary dwelling. Giving you all the understandings of that word. It's very, and he builds the sukkah, the booth, not for himself. He builds it for, and this is a, his livestock, or some translations say for his cattle. And so when you study this out, it's kind of misleading because when we hear the word livestock or cattle, we would think he's building it for cows. But when you study, and, it, and, it, and that word could mean that, but in the context of who the Hebrews were, they were shepherds. And they 
wouldn't necessarily take care of cows, but they, they could at points. But for the most part, what this was pointing to, this is the revelation, this is the insight. He was making a booth for either sheep or for goats. And so the first mention of booths, okay, is that context of making, and in that scripture, it goes almost out of its way to say he goes to booths, Sukkoth, mm -hmm. and he makes a Sukkah, and then they tell you again, he goes to booths. Mm -hmm. Why? Because remember when we learned that the scriptures go out of their way to emphasize. So really in one scripture, you have almost three thing, three mentions of booths. You have a place called booths two times, and then you have what Jacob built for his livestock or really for his sheep or goats that was mentioned once. So it's remember when we see that it's pointing to something in the future. It had a right then or now meaning where it meant something to him then, but it also was pointing to the future. What could it mean? Could it possibly tie in to the birth of the Messiah? Mm -hmm. I think it does. Let's look in Luke chapter two, verse seven and eight. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a feeding trough, a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. So now you have Luke chapter two, you have the story of the birth of Messiah, and you see that they're laying him in a feeding trough for livestock, for sheep, for goats, if you will. They wrap the babe in swaddling clothes. And if you don't say, what's swaddling clothes? Well, swaddling clothes in the Bible, what it would have been, because the, these were not just ordinary shepherds. These shepherds were priestly shepherds who were keeping um, um, the sheep that would be, or the, or the goats that would be used for the past, for instance, for the Passover offerings, for the Passover sacrifices. And so they would have a place um, called the Tower of the Flock that there would be a, a ritually clean concrete floor and they would have a feeding trough um, for the goats or the sheep. And then they would wrap, when the baby was born, the baby lamb or goat was born in order to protect that, from hurting itself, because remember, they couldn't have any, remember, these lambs or goats had to be perfect. Remember, they had to be spotless. So they couldn't get a scrape or a, a cut on them. So what they would do, they would wrap those sheep or goats in old priestly garments. Mm -hmm. And that's what the swaddling clothes were for. So you can kind of, now if any of you ever seen um, pictures um, during December of, or, or maybe you, you've, you've made them yourself where you've actually seen um, scenes of the baby born lying in a manger and you see the cattle and you see all those um, other animals. And then you, what, what you didn't realize mm -hmm. is that what would that structure actually be that the baby would be laying in? He's be, he'd be in that manger or that feeding trough because our Lord would actually provide food for all humanity. He was the bread of life yeah. uh, and we would eat of him as that lamb. But what we would be really looking at was a Sukkot. Right. They laid, they put him, there was no room for him in the end. And there was really kind of two, two reasons why there wouldn't be room for him. One reason was there was a census, right? We know about the census. And we know that one of the reasons um, they, they would do this at a, at a feast time was because they knew the people would be at their homelands or they would be going to Jerusalem so they could get a count of the people. 
So you have two things going on at the same time. You have this census, and then you have the, the feast days. And the, the scripture is going to point now, let me just, just you're going to see this as we go along. The scriptures are going to give us clues in Luke and Matthew that this is the Feast of Tabernacles or the, the because you'll see that when the angels announce um, this special day, this says they talk about this being a season of great joy, right? right. What is this season about? A season of rejoicing. Yeah to all people and this is also Sukkot is also known as the feast of the nation so it would be to all people he will be called Emmanuel or God with us all these themes and hints and we didn't understand that but they were pointing to this time of Sukkot and John chapter 1 verse 14 that is like one of the most telling scriptures because Sukkot, it's a tabernacle, it's a dwelling. What does John 1.14 say? And the word became flesh and tabernacled among us. We looked upon his glory and the glory of the one and the only from the Father, full of grace and truth. So now John gives us one of the biggest hints. Remember how the scriptures work. God gives us hints or clues. Now, of course, because we didn't know the scriptures like as much as um, the people of that day, we we today didn't get the hints. You're getting it now because you're studying the Hebrew roots, amen? But yeah. before, when you didn't know the Hebrew roots, you didn't um, get those hints. But now we're getting those, those hints, right? You're getting those hints. So that when the Lord said um, that the word, right, became flesh and what? Tabernacles. Okay, but if we pulled that into the Hebrew what would it say? He took it among yeah. us. Do you see that? The first yeah. mention is about, the first mention was about a, a sheep. He came and sukkot. Yeah. He came and tabernacle amongst. Well, let's go, let's look at um, the next mention of sukkot, and it's found in Exodus chapter 12. Verse 37, and the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to sukkot, about 600,000 on foot, that were men besides children. Now, when Israel left Egypt, one of the greatest stories of the Bible, we understand that when they left Egypt, they killed the Passover lamb, right? Mm -hmm. They ate the Passover lamb. Then they had to leave in haste, the Bible says. And they left on the next day, which was the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And once they left, they went from one feast, right. Passover, but it's, which is the first feast, but they actually jumped mm -hmm. to a place called Bus, <laughs> Sukkot. And it's prophetic. You understand? It's prophetic because if you look at the menorah and we show you the menorah and we show you the seven feasts of the Lord represented by the seven branches of the menorah, you'll find that the first feast, Passover, has the same branch, same root connected to the seventh branch, which is Sukkot or tabernacles. And so they prophetically, if you will, and say you somebody be say well what is that about what was because well this is what it's about every time sukkot or tabernacles is mentioned in the scriptures when it's talked about in leviticus and we're going to read it later when it's talked about in deuteronomy every time it's mentioned every time god said celebrate sukkot this is what he tells them celebrate Sukkot in remembrance that I took you out of Egypt mm -hmm. and then you dwelt in booths in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So they move. So what, what are the themes? Mm -hmm. God covered wow. Israel mm -hmm. in their homes. Right. Egypt was temporary. Egypt was not their home. He covered them with the blood of the lamb. They leave Egypt. They go to the wilderness, and God says, I've got you covered here too. But I'm going to cover you with my cloud. I'm going to cover you with my protection. I'm going to cover you with my glory. Now, both 
Passover and Sukkot have themes. God covers his people. God protects his people. God provides for his people. And the understanding is this, that when Israel got into the wilderness for 40 years, I want you to think about this. Where did they live? They lived in temporary dwellings. Yeah. They lived in Sukkot's. Mm. But while they're in those Sukkot's, I want you to think about this, because this is where I want you to get this understanding and revelation of why is Sukkot so special? What does it point to? Because literally when Israel left Egypt, they were saved. Mm. They were saved from Egypt, but they, but they weren't complete. Their salvation, if you will, mm. wasn't completed. You understand? Even today, you understand, when you accept the Lord, you're saved, but your salvation isn't completed until he comes back and you get and you go to be with him and you rule with and reign with him in that seventh feast pointing to that thousand year millennial reign. Now, but what happened in the wilderness? Now, here's what I want you to think about this. Israel entered into what's called Sukkot of glory or mm. clouds of glory. Remember what the scripture says while they were obedient. I want to preface this. As long as Israel was obedient, mm. they were living in the clouds of glory. What does the scripture say? Their clothes right. did not wear out. Yeah. There was not one feeble or we can put it this way. They weren't sick. They never got sick. Mm. They never had a lack of clothes. They never had a lack of anything. God fed them with heavenly manna. They never lacked anything for those 40 years, as long as they were obedient. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that when it was time to move, they never knew how long they would be in one place. So you know their dwelling had to be a Sukkot, a temporary dwelling. They didn't know if they'd be there a day, scripture says. They'd be a week, a, a month, a year. They didn't know. Whenever the cloud moved, mm -hmm. what did the what did um, what did the scripture say that um, Moses commanded them to say? Arise, arise, O Lord, Lord, and what? Let your, your enemies, enemies be, scattered. be scattered. And then when the ark rested, it said, "Lord, arise and return." To your resting place it's so prophetic god's telling us if you understand we're not there yet we are in between if you will passover and the great sukkot or the the millennial reign but in the meantime god's got you covered Hallelujah. you're in the cloud of glory he protects you, Thank you Lord. he provides for you and he guides you and that's part of that now let's look at um deuteronomy chapter 16 and let's Look at some more scripture. I hope you're enjoying this tonight. Verse 13, you are to keep the feast of Sukkot for seven days after gathering in the produce from your threshing floors and your wine press. So you will rejoice in your feast, you and your son and daughter, slave and maid, Levite and outsider, orphan and widow within your gates. Seven days you will feast to Adonai your God in the place he chooses because Adonai your God will bless you in all your produce and in all the work of your hand, and you will be completely filled with joy. Hallelujah. So you'll see here from Deuteronomy 16, God promised that I am going to bless Amen. you. And so this is the really the last feast of the year yeah. because you have three foot feasts. You have the, uh, you would go to Israel, you would go to Jerusalem to celebrate um, during the Passover season, you would go during Pentecost or Shavuot season. They were all had to do with uh, a type of harvest. Passover had to do with the barley harvest. Right. Um, Pentecost would have to do with the wheat harvest. And then Sukkot is all the rest. It's the wine, it's the oil, it's, it's the yeah, it's the, the grapes, dates, the it's, olives, a, it's the, the pomegranates, it's any yeah. so anything that would come up after those um that harvest of Pentecost, you would go and and God promised here's here's the good thing of, of that you see from Sukkot. Leviticus 16 says, God says, there will be a harvest. Yeah. And I'm just just confirming yeah. the word to you tonight, and as you appropriate these promises and you start walking in this tabernacle's blessing god said there's gonna be a harvest and i want you to come and rejoice over it i want you to celebrate and you see he actually 
I, I want to say it in the right way. <laughs> this joy has nothing to do with emotion. Right. This joy has nothing to do with personal happiness. It's a commanded joy. So, and it's hard for us to understand how can God, you know, I, you, he's almost saying, I want you to align your emotions mm -hmm. because you are blessed whether you realize it or Amen. not. Amen. You are favored, you are yeah. protected, yeah. you're taken care of, I am guiding you. And then I want you to choose, if you will. And this is, and, and you've got to realize this that all throughout the scriptures, um, God would tell the people, that this is how I want you to live. You're not of this world, you're of my kingdom. And if I'm telling you this is a season to rejoice, you just you put on your, your big girl or big boy pants and you say, I'm gonna rejoice right now, yes. whether I feel like it or yeah. not. Now, sometimes you feel like it, but sometimes you don't feel like it. And when you don't feel like, that's when you give God that sacrifice of praise, it's like, which is the fruit of your lips. It's like, Lord, I'm gonna praise you even when I don't feel like praise. I'm gonna rejoice even when I don't feel like rejoicing. And so there's some themes of this of tabernacles that I want you to, to see uh, about so you kind of understand how to do it practically. Mm. First of all, understand that every person, according to Leviticus, um, excuse me, according to Deuteronomy 16 that we just read, every person, whether you're born into Israel right. or whether you were living in the land as a stranger or a sojourner, it didn't matter you were invited yeah. to celebrate. And so one of the things that is a custom or tradition to do that I want to encourage you, if you build your own booth, now Pastor Lisa and I live in a condo, and so we <laughs> really don't have room for to, to build a booth. But what we did is we took our patio and we decorated it with palm branches. And we're going to add during the week, we're going to add more and more things. We're going to add dried fruit and decorations and, and maybe some lighting or whatever. But what you want to do, and, and we've already invited my sister Sherry to come mm -hmm. over one night mm -hmm. to sell. But what you want to do do is you want to use this time to invite people that might not know the Lord in the way you know him. They might not understand the feast days. And they might say, pastor, uh, they might, uh, I'm saying pastor Ken, but they might tell you and they say, hey, aren't you a Christian? Isn't that tabernacles? I see them all at synagogues and some of my Jewish friends. Why would you celebrate tabernacles? Well, this would be a good opportunity you invite them to your house mm -hmm. and you could read some scripture you can tell them what the lord is doing in your life yeah. um so this is what we're trying to teach you so all are invited and they want to so they could rejoice and it's a celebration time it's not a time it's one of the things that we've been learning it's not a time and we want you to read your Bible because really during this season, you'll see from Nehemiah and Deuteronomy, you'll see that you from, from the, when we turn the calendar from Rosh Hashanah, the first day of the seventh month till the end of Tabernacles, really what, one of the things that you could do, which would be great to do is you actually read the whole Torah. Yeah. You start in, in Genesis and you in five books of Moses, there were the five books, um, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And then um, you would start, um, the Torah portions after that, which they start again in, in um, the week after that, which we'll tell you about that later. But if that's something you could do. But what we want to also say is like, it's not a time to like do your heavy Bible study, um, digging out everything. It's, it's a, it's, it's a, so you say it's a lifetime. You know it's a, we went through atonement where we examined ourselves, but to, now it's a lifetime. So it's a time of, of refreshing. It's a time of resting. It's a time of, of celebrating. It's a time really to be thankful because so just like, remember the seventh day Shabbat, remember that's the seventh day of the week, we rest in all that the Lord blessed us with. This is the seventh feast, right? right? In the seventh month, okay, it's the last feast. And so, and for seven days, you keep this feast. And what is God wanting you to do? Be thankful. Yeah. Be thankful. Look how good the Lord's been to you. Look how faithful he's been. Um, remember, it's a, it's a good time to reflect, mm -hmm. to remember his goodness. Remember, you've been redeemed. Yeah. 
Remember, he sanctified you. Remember, he, he, you're born again. Remember, he's your, he, he, gives, he instructs you. Remember, you yes, he's going to resurrect you. I mean, remember yeah. all that he justified you. He's your righteousness. I mean, there's so many things you could just, I mean, you, I don't yeah. know, that baby, Thank you can Lord. think about how, many, how, much, how much we could be thankful. Be, be thankful you've been learning yeah. about his Amen. ways. Amen. So one of the things that people don't realize is when the pilgrims came from the old world to the new world, mm -hmm. they came with the mindset of doing the feast of the Lord. Right. And one of the feasts they celebrated with the Indians, which we didn't yeah. realize. Yeah. Now it turned into what we call today in America, Thanksgiving. Yeah. Now they, they commemorate it on November, um, the fourth, I was it the fourth, uh, Thir fourth week or fourth yeah. uh, Thursday, right? Of, of November, Thursday, first, yeah. right? But really, when you study, and I challenge you, you used to do a yeah. little study, you're going to find out really what they were celebrating was the seventh feast of the seventh month. And they were, it was a feast of, it's called, because also in the Bible, it's called the Feast of In Gathering. They were in gathering. We know this is what Thanksgiving is all about. They're, they're mm -hmm. thankful for the in gathering for the blessings, for the crops, mm -hmm. and they all ate together yeah. and were thankful. Where do you get that? Where are the roots of thanksgiving? <laughs> You're looking at it. You're in it tonight. You're As we celebrate mm -hmm. tabernacles, that's where they got yeah. the thanksgiving. So we need to be thankful. God commanded us to be thankful. And so, and also remember the feast, every feast, remember God said, these are these are my feasts. Mm -hmm. These are my holy days. And this feast points you yeah. to a time that you're going to return back to the Garden of Eden. Mm -hmm. Where God, remember, we talked about what happened in Garden of Eden. God walked. He tabernacled yeah. with Adam, with Eve. They walked with the Lord. So in a sense, this is reminding us of a day when in Revelation 21, where the, the tabernacle of God is with men. I mean, it, what God starts from the beginning, he, you know, he really, he completes it in the beginning because everything's already, already been done. Um, but he also shows us, the Bible says in Isaiah, he says he declares the end from the beginning. So he, sh every the whole Torah is full of proto prophecies. Mm -hmm. So as you're celebrating Sukkot, recognize that he's returning us back yeah. to the garden of Eden. Yeah. And people are beginning to understand this more and more that God has, uh, is really returning us to the book of Acts and the book of Acts. This is what they were doing. They were doing all God's feast right. days. Yeah. Now, I was thinking about this. I want you to, you don't have to answer this, but if you want to answer this, um, by putting in a chat or, or, or you want to uh, tell us after, you don't have to say it right now during the teaching, but think about what, if you were sitting in a Sukkot mm -hmm. in the wilderness and you were looking at the moon and the stars at night, or if in the in the daytime, if you were looking at the sun and 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 all the beauty of creation, what do you think the tabernacle or living in that tabernacle would, would why would God have you live in that temporary dwelling? I want you to, why would He have you be able to look up? Look up you know, you're going to make the, he tells you, he just tells you how to make it in Leviticus 23 he, and Nehemiah 8. He tells you to make it with palms and, and leafy branches and the willow and, and fruit. He, he tells you, so you're looking at, think about it. You're looking at all of God's creation. Then you look to the heavens and you see God's markers of his Moedim, of his authority. You see the moon, for instance. You see that God sets my time. Yeah. And my then here's here's the big one. I'm giving you, I'm giving you the answer, but I'm just gonna give, give you some understanding. But I want you to think if you were out there, you'll be realizing mm -hmm. you look at that soot coat and you see the wind blow and it moves. Mm -hmm. Well, why is it what it would remind you or tell you is like, okay, the things of this earth are what? Temporary. Mm -hmm. 
What it's telling you, I'm giving you the answer. <laughs> it's telling you that this world is not your home. Right. What it's telling you is God is your everything. Amen. He's your Yahweh, Elohim. He's your grace, grace. He's your mercy, mercy. mercy. He's Avinu. He's your Abba Father. He's your protector. He's your provider. He's the God, he, you know, every redemptive name of God that you can think yeah. about, you know, he's your shalom. He's your pre shama. He's your righteousness. When you, when, yeah. when you start thinking about why does God need us to do? And I was thinking about this because we're not there yet. We're learning how to do this. I was like, what would it mean for us to take a week off <laughs> we talked seven about days yeah. Live in, because we're, now we're doing our meals in the Sukkot, but what if we were to actually live in the Sukkot for seven days? Mm -hmm. Because that's what's really going to, yeah. uh, was going on in the wilderness. And that goes on many places. Many people are actually doing it. They go to campgrounds. Yeah. They, they do many things to celebrate it. But think about this. What statement are you making? What light are you shining of the Torah, yeah. of the word to the world when you're saying, this world is not my home. Right. What are you speaking by doing that? Uh, my provision is heaven. Yeah. So I'm just trying to give you this understanding. Yeah. Now, Pastor Lisa, yeah. read Psalms 27. Look at, look at this scripture, so 27 verse 5. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. he is going to hide us another reason mm -hmm. we get in that tabernacle it's a picture yeah. of god covering us of god protecting us keeping us from safe from harm we got to claim amen. those kind of scriptures amen we got yes. to claim that because we need god's protection now more than ever yeah. we need him to hide us from the plague we need yes. to hide us yes. from the scourge we need, uh, even the, the hide us from the scourge of the tongue he hides us in his pavilion in his and in, in that if that's the same one of the words for sukkot for sukkot um, in that scripture, look at Ezekiel 37, 27. My tabernacle also shall be with them. Yes, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Amen. Let's go to the next page. All right. Cause we talked about revelation 21. We talked about that, about that tabernacle and, and you can see the heart of the Lord all the time. And, and those of you who are, are listening and, and keeping these feasts and, and you're doing your best to learn about, it, if you could just see Father's heart right now and how much yeah. he says, I, I, I want to be with you. This is my goal. And, yeah. and remember when the tabernacle came down, it was just a, and then they had the tree of life there and it was, and the leaves are healing for the nations and there it's mm -hmm. by the, the, there's this water flowing and all these are themes of tabernacle we're going to be talking about in the next week or so the, about the the rain and about the water the live mm -hmm. and being in his presence in the presence of the lord that was something that god wanted because remember that in the wilderness what was the center think about it you have all these booths right you have all these booths and and the cloud would lead them but what's in the center of all the booths another booth Oh, it's yeah. called a Mishkan. Yeah. And he, it's another town. It's a temporary. Yeah. Remember, it's Tabernacle. a temporary, but everything's pointing. Mm. They're all, it's always pointing mm. that God wants to be near us or with us. And so um, let me just throw out some things as we, we try to bring this close, uh, slowly to a close. One of the things I want you to understand, if you're keeping this feast of tabernacles, this is a get to moment for you the more you learn about the feast the more you'll realize yes. if you're not born native israelite right. and then you're grafted in according to romans chapter 11 right the bible talks about that we're grafted into that same mm -hmm. tree galatians talks about our father and being our spiritual father in a sense being abraham we're part of abraham's seed through yeshua you get grafted in and right. and, and the covenant that he promised, he's the, he only promised that covenant to either the house of Israel and the house of Judah. So you, you're you part of that. You're yeah. part of the house of Israel and Judah because you're married to, to Yeshua, who's part of Judah. And you're you're part of those nations that that um, that lost their inheritance. But, but when the Lord 
died, was buried and rose again, he became the king's redeemer and redeemed the house of Israel back to him. And so you realize you're a part of that. And this is a get to for you. And yeah. don't ever, I, if anyone asks you, it's like, do you have to do that? Say, no, I don't have to. I get to do it. That's right. And, um, and so, it, because it's such a beautiful picture. And then once you start looking in the New Testament and you start seeing all these themes of tab, you see the themes of God wanting to tabernacle among us and him yeah. being near us. And the Bible even talks about our body being a tabernacle. Yeah, a you'll, you'll, you'll say, yes, it's a get to. Now, if you don't know this, I'm going to teach you something that some people don't realize because there's people that say, Pastor Ken or Pastor Lisa, you know, Yeshua, why do you keep Saturday as a Sabbath? Don't you know that Jesus fulfilled Sabbath? Yes, I know. <laughs> why do you keep Passover? Don't you know Jesus fulfilled Passover? Yes, I know. Why do you keep Pentecost? Didn't the early church fulfill Pentecost? Yes. The only problem I have with you saying that is you have a different definition of fulfilled than the Bible has. When the Bible talks about fulfillment, it doesn't mean ending. It means to strengthen, to uphold, to confirm or to even fill it to the brim. It has no, no, nowhere because Yeshua said plainly, he said, I did not come to break, abolish, destroy, do away with Torah. I came to fulfill it, confirm it, strengthen it, yeah. uphold it, bring it to fill it up. Yeah, that's right. So my problem is that People today are twisting because they've been, they've been twisting or they've been mistaught what fulfilled means and what God meant through the feast days. And Colossians 2, the Apostle Paul is very plain in verse 17 when he says the feast days are prophetic pictures yeah. that, po that are, they are prophetic they are shadows of what's to come. So if think about it, if they didn't mean anything, why would he even talk about them being prophetic pictures or shadows? Because a shadow only points to something that's real or relevant. Right. Think about that for a moment. Right, right. But here's what I want to teach you. And this is one of the greatest cases for keeping tabernacles and all the feast days. Because Zechariah, Chapter 14 is in context of a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. Or at least during the millennial reign, one of the two. Now, Zechariah 14, this is what it says. First, the first part is verse 9. Yahweh will be king over all the earth, and that day Yahweh will be one, and his name will be one. Is Yahweh the king over all the earth now? He is, yes. But has it been appropriated? Mm -hmm. Is the world celebrating Jesus, Yeshua, as the king of kings and the Lord of lords? No. no. But he says, in that day, so there's coming a day that the Lord is going to come back, set up his Millennial kingdom, which I believe this is what's happening in, in, in Zechariah, and he is Echad. He is going to be, his, gonna, his name is going to be one, and he's going to be the, the one ruler. He's going to be Echad, Echad, which is part of, he's part of the, the one, remember we were in the year of the Aleph, or the, the oneness. So it's pointing to something. We're in this season where God's trying to remind us of the unity and celebration. Sukkot is a celebration of the king of kings. When he, when he is recognized that he is the one true king. Do you understand? So tabernacles is going to be a time in the future prophetically 
where all the earth, every nation, whether they want to or not, you're going to see it in just a moment, Zechariah 14, verse 16, you're going to see it, that they are commanded, demanded, and remember, Revelation says when he comes back, he's going to rule how? Not with a shepherd's rod. Mm -mm. He's going to rule with a rod of iron. Yeah. All right, so read that, Zechariah 14. It will happen that everyone who is left on left of all the nations that came against Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, Yahweh of armies, and keep the Feast of Booths. It will be that whoever of all the families of the earth doesn't go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahweh of armies, on them there will be no rain. If the family of Egypt doesn't go up and doesn't come, neither will it rain on them. This will be a plague with which Yahweh will strike the nations that don't go up to keep the Feast of Booths. So there's going to be a time, we don't know when this is going to happen, but during the millennial reign, when Yeshua is reigning as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, when everybody has to bow down before right. him, they will have to send, if you understand the scripture correctly, they will send a representative, every family, every city, every nation will send a representative of their family to say, we are celebrating you as the King of yeah. Kings on this day of Sukkot. So think about it. If it's mm -hmm. already fulfilled and fulfilled means end, like people think, why would Zechariah give us this prophetic picture of one day when the king is reigning, that he's going to demand every person or every family and nation to bring a gift and worship on Sukkot. And then if you don't, what would be? There was a plague. And one of the parts of that plague is there would be no rain. And understand, what does rain do? You can have the ox plow. You can have the ox, and you can plant. But without the rain, what happens? No there is no harvest. And so basically the nations and the people of the nations that refuse to bow before the King of Kings, they would not be, they would not have harvest. They would not have blessing. We went to Israel um, a few years back and we've been there. We were there this year, but a few years back, we were caught in a rainstorm. Yeah. And we're like, I don't like this. You know, we were like, we didn't like it. And our guide, if some of you met him, Andre, he's dancing, he's singing, he's shouting, he's saying, blessing, blessing, bless. And he's just going crazy because Israel understands that rain is a, it points to God saying, I'll bless you. And so even tabernacles helps us understand it's a time that we should expect showers of what? Showers of blessing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, but if, but this also reminds us that in the, at the, and this is why you want to learn how to do this now. If you're doing this now, listen, you're not going to have to worry whether you're going to be doing it in the millennium. Of course, you're going to be doing it. But the nations that don't do it, they won't see the blessing. But this is also something that if you're keeping this feast, get your expectation up. Amen. That this shower is a blessing for shower. us, even in, this, in yeah. this season of rejoicing, because this is a season of you're bringing your first fruits of that last harvest of that fall harvest, if you will. But there's more. God's saying you're bringing your first fruits because I'm going to bless you. There's going to be abundance. So just rejoice. And so Ezekiel 34 verse, and I want you to read when you can, not now. Read when you when you can. And read the whole chapter of Ezekiel 34. It will bless you. But Verse 26, and I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. And there shall be showers of blessing. And so there is that promise. God promised us that at, that, at, the, his, yeah. at the season that he appoints, there would be showers of blessing. We're going to read. I want to read one more scripture because I want you to, cause, and I read it. I saved it for last and I could have read it first. But I want to remind you that if you don't know where, say, you, some of you might be thinking, I'm new to this feast thing. I'm new to the Sabbath. I don't really understand. If you go to Leviticus 23, mm -hmm. it will give you 
all seven feasts right. and the Sabbath, and it will show you how God said, these are my feasts. You have to proclaim them during the time. In other words, he's saying very specifically, uh, Moses, you can't tell the people to have a feast on a different time. You have to proclaim them. This is this is important. So once you understand that, you don't since they're his feasts. And remember, this is a this is an act of humility because you're basically bowing your will and your desire. Because you might say it's not convenient time. God said, I don't really care if it's convenient. This is my time. I want to bless you. I want to meet with you. Proclaim it during this season. So let's read Leviticus twenty three in verse I believe it's uh, we, verse thirty three, and we'll read some more. Um, Almost to the end of the chapter, you can read at home. But Yahweh spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say, On the fifteenth day of the seventh month is the feast of the booths for seven days to Yahweh. On the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no regular work. Seven days you shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation to you. You shall offer an offering made by fire to Yahweh. It's a solemn assembly. You shall do no regular work. So on the fifth day of the seventh month when you have gathered in the first fruits of the land you shall keep the feast of Yahweh seven days on the first day on the first day shall be a solemn rest and on the eighth day shall be a solemn rest you shall make on the first day the fruit of majestic trees branches of palm trees and boughs of thick trees and willows of the brook and you shall rejoice before Yahweh your God for seven days you shall keep it as a feast to Yahweh seven days in the year it's a statue forever throughout your generations. You shall keep it in the seventh month. You shall dwell in temporary shelters for seven days. All who are native born in Israel shall dwell in temporary shelters. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in temporary shelters when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am Yahweh, your God. Amen. Thank you, baby. So I want you just to, as we, we close this out, I want you to see that Leviticus 23, yeah. the Lord taught the people. He had it through Moses. He had to teach the people. These are my appointed times. So we are in the seventh month, right. Hebrew calendar. We are tonight starts the 15th day of that month. So this is the first day of seven days. And what, what did the scripture say? The first day and the eighth day. And it's, it's, now, it's, I'm, I'm not going to teach on this now, but I, there's, some, there's mysteries in tabernacles because you have a first day, and then he says, he says it's, a set, it's for seven days, so it's a seven-day feast, and then he'll throw in, he throws in, and the eighth day. So you have this eighth day that's connected but separate, and it's pointing to something, but I don't want to get into that now, but I want you to think the first day would be a Shabbat. So you're, it would be a time to assemble, a time to gather, a time to celebrate. But then God says, I want you to bring out, you start the Sukkot with a Sabbath, and then you end the Sukkot on the eighth day with a, a Sukkot, uh, with a Sabbath. And then he says, I want to remind you of why you're doing this. And he goes on and tells them, he says, because when the Lord delivered you, and remember what we teach you at Save the Nations, yeah. when, you, when you understand that you're part of Israel, you have to picture yourself that you were there when you, you were with the Israelites yeah. in Egypt. That was your family. You, got to yeah. see, you can't think that, that that was them and this is me. No, you were there. You got to understand mm -hmm. the whole context of Passover and being you are part of that nation. You're part of that yeah. covenant. You're part of that inheritance that you were there. And so he's, he's reminding them, you got delivered. Right. You got rescued. You got redeemed by that blood. And after I rescued you, you what happened? You went, remember what we read, the second mention? They went, went from, from Egypt to Sukkot. Yeah. They went right to God's mm. coverings. And there he protected them. He provided for them. He guided them. And so these are some of the themes that I want you to just recognize. We, we gave you many other things to think about. But I just as we close, I want you to think about this. Who rescued you? Yeah. 
who, who redeemed you? Who saved you? What, what does Egypt represent? Death. Right. What does Egypt represent? Bondage. The way, Egypt represents the ways of the world. Right. The wrong way to live. Living under slavery, under bondage, under a taskmaster. Remember, when they're in Egypt, they didn't celebrate Shabbat. They didn't, they didn't keep Shabbat because Egypt wouldn't let them celebrate a Shabbat. Well, once you get out of Egypt, God is your rest. Right, Amen. Right. So now, so I just want to, as we close and we, we take some time to pray for you to enter in, one of the things that I want you to think about during the season as you're under the Sukkot, three things. God protects you. God provides for you. Not the world. Don't fear man. Mm -hmm. And God leads you and guides you. Because while they were in those shelters in the wilderness, they didn't have to think, where do I need to go next? Right. I'm telling you prophetically tonight, if you'll hear me, you don't, don't make the decision, I need to do this. I need to do that. In fact, if you read the scriptures, the apostle taught us, he said, don't say, right. I'm going to go here. I'm going to go there. It's if you understand, it's pointing to tabernacles. It's pointing to booths when he says that, and, and say, I'm going to go there. I'm going to make a profit. I'm going to live for a certain amount of time. You, what does the scripture says? Instead, you should say, if the Lord wills. wills. So what's, say, Pastor Ken, what's supposed to be my prayer? Our Father, who art yes. in heaven, hallowed be your, be your name. Yeah. Your kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be, be done. done in my life on earth. I'm in this temporary yes. dwelling. This earth is not my home. It's a temporary dwelling. Just like Abraham looked for a city whose builder and maker is God. This is not my home. I'm looking for the new Jerusalem. Amen. I'm get, I'm going back to the garden of Eden. And But while I'm here, provided for, protected, we need that today more than ever. We know that. Yes. And that God is going to guide yes. your footsteps. When the ark moves, and the and the cloud moves that's when you move uh, and I, I hope you're receiving this tonight yes. because i know it's 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 hard for some some people to understand they think you know we're we're americans we get to mm -hmm. do what we want when we want yeah you're american but what's your first what's your first homeland it's the kingdom of god Amen. heaven so yeah. heaven heaven directs your paths more than anything else so um Amen. Amen. So anyway, I hope you received that, that word, word tonight. Yes. And um, we're going to have a, a word of prayer. Do you, yeah. or, I don't know if do you have a song to close. I'm not sure yeah, what you, what you did. Let's pray first. Let's pray. And then we'll end with a, with a song. Amen. Amen. Um, Father, we just thank Praise you for you, tabernacles. We thank you that you Sukkot among us and thank that you, we dwell in Sukkot. Yes. And we thank you, Lord, mm. that you are our protection. You protect us, Lord. And I thank you that we're protected yeah. from the elements of this world, which means we are protected, God, from what's going on this COVID. We are protected by the blood of Yeshua. We are protected, Lord. No yes. evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come nigh our dwelling. And we thank you, Lord, for that protection. We're protected, we're protected from violence. We're protected, Lord, from from poverty, from, Lord, um, all kinds of evil. We are protected yes. from it. The angels of the yes, Lord yes, yes. encamp around about us. And Lord, just like Israel dwelt in those booths and they were protected and the glory cloud came, we thank you that your glory is our rear guard. We thank you for that. Lord, we thank you that you provide for us. You are our provider. Thank you. You give us the food to eat. You give us the clothes to wear. You give us the shoes, Lord, to put on our feet. You provide for us. You give us our jobs. You, Lord, do that. And we thank you. We thank you for that provision, Lord. You've put breath on the inside of us. And we thank you for it, God. And Lord, we thank you that you lead and guide and direct us. And Lord, by your spirit, Lord, we listen. As your children, we listen for that still, small voice. Lord, that we will follow the presence of the Lord. We will not follow what the world is doing. We will follow the presence of the Lord. And that discernment, Lord, mm -hmm. we thank you that you have filled us with your Holy yes, Spirit. Yes, yes. And you have given us the gift of discernment, mm -hmm. which means we understand the times, the seasons. We understand 
the moments that we are in. Lord, we have supernatural discernment and we thank, we give you right away, Holy Spirit, to speak to us loud and to guide us and direct us that we will not do what we want, but we will do what the Father wants and we will go where the Father wants us to go. Oh, we praise you, Lord. I praise mm -hmm. you that during this season, Lord, that we're going to win souls, that Lord, we're going to be a light to our neighbors, a light to our family, and not a light to our friends and our coworkers. And Lord, give us people that we can invite to our homes or we can invite to teach this to. Lord, give us that opportunity. We thank you, Father, that you want this for everyone. And Father, we thank you that you sent Yeshua. You, you sent him to be born, and he was born in a Sukkot, and he was born in a manger. And we say, happy birthday, Yeshua, <laughs> because this is your real birthday. Oh, we hallow you, and we honor you, and we thank you for coming to earth, and we thank you for dying for us and taking our <clears throat> sins and removing them. And we thank you for being raised from the dead and you defeated the enemy, you defeated Satan and you've given you've given to your children, all those who believe, you've given us power, you've given us authority, you've given us dominion on this earth to demonstrate who our father truly is. We thank you for that. We magnify you God right now. We glorify you our Adonai, our King of Kings, our Lord of Lords. Oh, we just worship you. We yes, worship you. Yes, we yes. want to be that sanctuary, God. We want to be that living Sukkot, Lord, that when people see us, that they see the living, the, the living God. Lord, we are not about religion. We are about the living God, that they see you alive on the inside of us. Lord, that when they look at us, they see that we are your hands, we are your, your feet, we are your mouth. Lord, we are your representatives and they see you, Lord, in us. And we thank you for that right now. Oh, Father, I pray for every person listening. I pray, God, that you would just take them deeper, deeper during this season. Lord, truly show them what it means to tabernacle and what it means for you to tabernacle inside of us. Reveal it, Lord, to us in a mighty mighty way and i thank you father for what you're doing and lord we just pray god for our, lord our president right now god that we found out lord that he's in the hospital and, and lord we know that he has COVID. and lord this is just a disease from the pit of hell lord we recognize that this disease has come upon the earth as a judgment it is it is a, it is coming because we have sinned the world have sinned we have rejected the truth and lord even Israel has sinned because we, they have failed to keep the Sabbath. They have failed to keep the feast days. They failed to honor you and hallow you. And Lord, we have failed. And Lord, we repent right now. And Lord, we ask you, you told us in your word to pray for those in authority. So we pray for our president and his wife. We pray healing over them right now. Lord, yes, that this yes. virus will leave their bodies right now in the name of Yeshua. And I ask you, Yeshua, to visit our president, visit his wife. I ask you to go into that hospital room and let him feel your presence. Let him feel that you are, you are truly, you are truly the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And to his wife, make yourself real. Lord, we pray right now, God, this could be the greatest revival that the United States has ever seen. And we, as your people, cry out, God, oh, that you touch them right now in the name of Yeshua. Yes, yes, yes. And Lord, we just, we hallow you and we honor you. Oh, mm -hmm. and we know that you're coming back. And we, Lord, as we sit, Lord, in our Sukkot, as we go outside and we look up, we say, come quickly, Yeshua. Come quickly. Come quickly. We want you to come. Oh, we look forward to that day. And we love you. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all for, for joining us. Um, I want to just give you the heads up, remind you, if, if you didn't hear about it, so just so you know, uh, we have two services, 8.30 tomorrow and 10.30. We will be teaching about 
Sukkot, not the same message. It's going to be called Prophetic Sukkot, and you're going to really enjoy it tomorrow. And then we'll let you know what day during the week that we'll be doing a, a Zoom gathering next week, but also next Saturday, we have two services, 8.30 and 10.30, but then at 2 o'clock, we're going to have a feast or taste of the nations, <laughs> and it's going to be at the Mill Rats home. They have a beautiful home. They have a beautiful pool. The kids, and, and if you want to, you bathing can bring your bathing suits, suits yeah. come swimming. Please let us know. We want people to represent their nation or a nation you love for some food you just love. <laughs> um, share it with me. We want it um, and bring a lot. We have a, it's going to be, and remember, since we learned that Sukkot really um, would have been the real Thanksgiving in America. Pastor Lisa is making all the Thanksgiving. So you're going to have a full <laughs> turkey, uh, sweet potato, squash casserole. Um, so anyone want to add along those lines? It's going to be a great time together. Thank you. We're going to go out with some worship tonight. Yeah. And we appreciate all of you. All right. Love you. Thanks for joining. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be Yeah.
Hallelujah. That's what we want to be, that living sanctuary, amen, that people will see Yeshua on, living on the inside of us. Well, God bless you guys. Can't wait to see you tomorrow for Sabbath. And those of you who have your kids in the dance, we do have practice. So I just want to let you know. We love you. Enjoy. Have a great night. Thank you for joining us. We love you all. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. Mm -hmm.